Hi, everyone. Uh, you said my name's Mario Sibulbaro. I'm an application engineer here at KT. Uh, new to the company, but have been a customer with them for a good time. Um, today, we're going to be discussing custom file item categories and their associated properties, and also some custom views, uh, why those can be advantageous um, for both users, direct users, um, CAD administrators, managers, and just company-wide as well. Uh, brief uh, history of myself. Uh, like I said, Kativ application engineer. Uh, I come from about 20 years of electromechanical uh, design experience, mainly with commercial automation. Um, started off as a machinist, uh, worked away into CAD design, electro panel enclosures, uh, field technician, um, also went and did 12 years of uh, CAD administration uh, through various companies administering uh, Volt with two or three different companies. Uh, with Kativ as an application engineer, uh, specializing providing support in Volt and Inventor for the most part. So why use custom categories and properties? Like I'm saying at the user level, um, can provide better data selection, um, better finding to reuse certain parts, um, finding parts that maybe are a better fit, uh, availability, knowing if it's something that you have in stock, something that needs to be ordered, or if it's a long lead item. Um, additionally, if you are making parts from blanks or from purchase parts, it gives you a little bit more in-depth view as opposed to the, just the where use tab. You can see this in a more dynamic matrix, if you will. At the CAD administration manager level, um, creating the file properties, I think for the most part, allows a bit of data analysis, kind of see how many uh, parts, assemblies, uh, drawings are the parts associated to an IDW or are they associated to an unlinked AutoCAD drawing, uh, which would be legacy data. And thirdly, uh, a lot of people are talking about this digital transformation journey. Um, cleaning up your data and you know assigning it the proper metadata just helps to get you to the next step, whether it be uh, setting up into an ERP MRP system or going into a PLM um, type of um, system. So to begin with, let's we'll start with the file and item categories. Start with file categories. Out of the box, uh, Volt comes with a base design representation, engineering, office, and standard um, categories. So when you check in a file, uh, I believe that any of them are to automatically, except for the office, I believe documents will automatically go into an office category. Um, some of the CAD specific customized categories that I've created in the past are assembly, an assembly category, which is primarily assigned to any IAM file, uh, assembly drawing. So if I ever wanted to sort and only look at drawings that were assembly drawings, uh, part category, to isolate the IPTs, part drawing to isolate IDWs that have an IPT referencing. Part, let's see, let's get back. Uh, purchase parts. Um, in Inventor, there is a uh, purchased uh, type that you can put in your bill of material, but that doesn't always carry into uh, the vault. So I do like the uh, purchase parts because you can add a some interesting metadata um, and custom properties to it. And also, if necessary, give it a separate life cycle. Um, tabulated part drawings and tabulated assembly drawings. Um, I'd like to know how many of those are in the vault um, when I'm analyzing it. Next, I also would use uh, legacy assembly drawings. Uh, these are drawings in which an assembly has been modeled up based off of a legacy AutoCAD drawing that where there's no link. Um, and same goes for the legacy part drawing. Uh, this is important to me 
because when a part would or an assembly would go into the revision state, I would want to tell the people to let's go ahead and create the IDW for this now um, so we can obsolete the legacy data. Going into item categories, a couple more here that come out of the box. We have uh, assemblies, documents, electrical, electrical project for those using AutoCAD electrical, uh, general, part, process, product, and purchase. The uh, refined uh, categories that I would work with were purchase part specific. Um, so I would create a item category, not just that it's purchased, but I want to know more. Is this a bushing? Is it a bearing? Is it a cylinder? Is it specialized hardware? Um, because I could create customized views to sort through these to be uh, to select them and see which ones were stocked items, which ones were ordered along Lee items and so forth. Um, Sub-assembly specific, um, depending on certain criteria, spline drives, pneumatic clamp assemblies, thrust isolator assemblies, um, being able to view, dynamically view a list of these and be able to filter out certain criteria uh, to select uh, particular sub-assembly for any product. Uh, was helpful. And next was a uh, product specific. So this could be a top level machine. Um, what kind of part, what are the envelopes of the machine? Uh, any criteria that would help in maybe selecting that machine for reuse um, in another project. Next, we're gonna look at uh, custom file slash item properties. Um, Specific to the purchase parts, additional properties that I was interested in. Vendor does come um, with Inventor and it also carries over to Volt, but I was interested in the vendor part number. I was interested in the, who the manufacturer was with the manufacturer part number. If there was a, if it was a stocked item, I'd want to know stock location. And within that stock location, we also included um, order for items that need to be ordered and long lead items for items that you know, would take, let's say, 30 days or longer to procure. File category is a category assignment property. Um, by creating the file category property and listing it as a purchase part, when it gets checked into the vault, it already knew to assign it the purchase parts category. Item category um, would help it go down the line once it gets assigned to an item to assign it correctly. Um, so you would list there you know, what type of purchase part it was. Uh, weight actual, that's something that we would do when we uh, get purchase parts in, we would weigh them. So we would have that uh, information there, uh, not only inputted into the model per se, but as a field that was available to sort and look at. At the item category level, um, example that I'm using here is a bushing. Again, we carry over with the vendor information, the vendor part number, manufacturer, manufacturer part number, stock location, everything that was on the uh, purchased item um, or purchased part file category. But in addition, we're able to add more refined criteria, flange OD, flange thickness, housing ID, length, staff diameter. Um, I think uh, here on C, what we're using that for. Ah, yeah, dynamic radial load capacity. So we're able to include that as well. Uh, and the temp range. And again, the item category is important um, at this level so that the item will assign um, as needed. Now going into Volt. So for creating the categories,
we go into the file categories where we go ahead and assign the categories that we want to add for the files. Um, and then we would also add their associated properties that would be that we would want. So since we're focusing on the purchase parts, this is where the file category, item category, manufacturer, all associated properties would be added. Also within the properties, go ahead and edit uh, location. We can go in and create a specific set of values if we wanted to have people select us. This was just shelf numbers that I created here. Um, again, if it's an item that was not in stock, we had it available for order, if it's a long lead item. And this was helpful when we would generate a uh, pick list or a purchasing list and so forth, all this information would just be there. I have a couple of questions here. Can I use item and or file categories to quickly find a little PDF copy of all spreadsheets for components contained within an assembly or the property categories? All right. Can I use item and or file categories to quickly find bonus if find means download a PDF copy of all spec sheets for components contained within an assembly and all sub assemblies if those spec sheet documents are properly categorized as spec sheets and within each part number is item master. Uh, the spec sheets I would say you would categorize at the, well, if you categorize at the file level, uh, but to answer your question, yes, you would be able to create a view, if you will, or search based on the category. Um, and if one of the properties was the part number or the associated uh, assembly, then you would be able to sort and view all of that. Uh, second here, Just all assembly or fab drawings associated with one assembly and all assemblies. Not sure the question is there. Just all assembly or fab drawings associated. I'm not sure if you're referring to the assembly file category or the legacy assembly. If you're referring to the assembly, uh, yeah, I would say you could actually have yeah a fabrication category too if you wanted to separate that. But assembly and or fabrication could be um, considered the same depending on how you would want to set it up. And if you were wanting to be able to sort if you didn't have a description or title uh, per se that had, let's say, fabrication and the title that you could sort through, then yes, you could create a fabrication uh, drawing category and be able to sort through those. Next question here, if I have an existing vault with everything set to base category, what are some methods to appropriately assign categories once a scheme is chosen? without doing it manually for each file. Uh, existing vault, everything is set to base. You would want to sort through um, whatever data you could, uh, whether if it's IPTs or IDWs. Um, and at that point, you could highlight multiple. Uh, for instance,
can highlight these, go to change category and assign it the category that it needs to be. And upon assigning it, all the custom properties that are associated with this category will automatically populate um, and be available to be filled in once it's selected. Can you create specific groups of categories to add to an item? Can you assign it to a category? Uh, might have to take that one offline. I'm not sure. Question there. Okay. Getting back to, okay, so initially we were looking at the file category um, for the purchase parts here. And you notice that it has the information that can be filled in uh, if your company is using uh, its own part numbering system, uh, associate that with the part number, um, vendor information, the vendor part number, manufacturer information if it's available. Take it to the item category level. Oh, I should. Sure. Talk about assignments a little bit as well. So the assignment rules so that when you check in a file from Inventor or AutoCAD into the vault and you want it to assign to a particular uh, category, this is the method that you would go through here. Um, pretty much creating a rule in which the rules for it, let me just set that, this one up while we're here. So we want any file in which the file category is purchase part to be assigned to a purchase part category. So now any file that's checked in where the file category property is set to purchase part will properly assign. And then the same goes for items. In the item, we have a bushing assign uh, rule in which any item in which the item category property is set to bushing upon assigning it to an item will automatically uh, jump to that category. So mainly on the file property, or, sorry, file category level, it's Pretty low level. It's a matter of uh, the file type that's being brought in or certain criteria of the file type, like we were talking about the legacy data, um, wanting to see which AutoCAD files are associated uh, unlinked or unreferenced to any models that are an inventor and so forth. Taking it next level to the item, this is where we're able to now look and create specialized views with information to sort. So just an instance here, uh, if I'm looking for bushing for a half inch. Shaft um, with a length. Um, let's say one inch. I have now all these available to choose from. Now within these, I'm seeing which ones we have in stock by the stock numbers here. So I can just go pick that out. Or if there's the other sizes, those would have to be ordered. So that would tell me, okay, let's go ahead and grab what's in stock and let's use that in my design. 
We have another question popping up. No, same question as before. We're not going into setting up for the item categories. Similar to the setting up of the file category and associated properties, um, we would assign all of the custom properties that were created. Personally, I like to do custom properties in all caps. It just differentiates them from uh, system properties or you know, the um, software as user properties. And now we're going into the custom views at the item level, because this is where everything has been refined, so to speak. And with the custom views, we're allowed to bring in whatever we want to be able to sort. I've created two. I've created a bushings and a bushing with image. The image has a thumbnail. Sometimes with products or certain parts, when you're sorting through pictures worth a thousand words to be able to see it. Other times, you can just go ahead and go with the uh, data itself to sort throughout it. Oh. Again, selecting the properties that you want to view, the order that you want to view them in. Also important is setting up the filter for the view. We're only wanting to see uh, items that are of the category bushing. Uh, a reason why it'd be important to have, let's say the file category here is that there could be an instance where we take a bushing and we modify it you know, do some machining work to it. It's still considered a bushing, but now that would be just a part and we'd be able to sort out which parts are, you know, bushings that are made from, if you will, versus uh, bushings that are just purchased. Okay, so to recap, uh, pretty much spoke on file categories, um, the benefits, the searchability and sortability um, based on the data type predominantly, um, being able to isolate, you know, not just IPTs, but certain types of IPTs or um, certain types of AutoCAD drawings, um, managing legacy data and so forth. Uh, also spoke on item categories, which can bring you a more refined search, um, you know, step up from the uh, file category and better defining and being able to search. We did the example of the bushing, so being able to search um, or manage based on the variety of criteria and its availability and so forth. Uh, we looked at the file and item properties, um, those properties that you specific search criteria that you're wanting to look for, be able to sort. Um, and it can be carried over from the file uh, categories into the item categories. And we looked at also some of the custom views, which is pretty much your interface, if you will, uh, when you want to search through the various item categories or file categories.
And at this time, I'll open it up to any questions. For a top level assembly, getting all of the assembly drawings for all components used in sub assemblies at all levels is helpful for one stakeholder. Another stakeholder might want all the fabrication drawings. Another stakeholder might want all the specification sheets associated with all the buy items. So within the item master, um, and in the bill of material, um, you have the option of actually creating a variety of lists um, that are filtered. So example would be on a top level assembly, um, I could do a parts only um, listing or purchase parts only listing and then also throw a filter in there to show me all items that are needing to be ordered, all items that are needing to be picked, to generate a pick list from, all items that need to uh, be ordered in advance because of a long lead status. Um, the same could work for your fabrication drawings. Um, if you're just wanting to see all fabrication drawings, if you created that criteria, you can isolate and create a list from that. Let's see, I, if I have a large assembly containing many parts within sub-assemblies, I'd like to go to that assembly's item master and quickly get a list of all the assembly fabrication specification drawings for all the parts and subcomponents within the assembly. Is using file and or item categories a method to achieve this? If the fabrication, if the drawings are all IDW or DWG, um, yes, when you create an item-based list, you are able to see if can demonstrate here. Items and look at the assembly here. You know, probably take that one offline, but there is a way to go ahead and uh, select from here and have it generate all the drawings and then. Similarly, you could uh, filter out um, if you only wanted fabrication drawings or specification drawings and so forth. Uh, so this is Claudio, if you wanna reach out to me, uh, we can go ahead and look at that. Okay, doesn't look like there's any other questions. Go ahead and take it back to uh, Christina. Great, thank you so much everyone for joining and thank you Mario for leading the session. If you guys have additional questions, you can email support at kativ.com and we will see you at next week's session. Thank you everyone.